Hello, welcome to number seven, Ministries Christian Outreach. Today's short sermonette is called Flirting with Satan. Flirting is a playful, romantic, or sexual overture by one person to another, subtly indicating an interest in a deeper relationship with the other person and can involve verbal communication as well as body language. You know, I just want to tell you that every time somebody commits a sin, it's because Satan initiated the flirting. Satan is the one who initiated the sin. Sin was around before we were even born. In fact, we even inherited the sin nature from Adam and Eve. But what I also want to bring out is notice that it says that the flirting is done subtly. And I also notice that the flirting is for the intention of a deeper relationship and that's exactly what Satan wants to do is he subtly wants to establish a deeper relationship with the body of Christ why does he want to do that because Jesus Christ is known as the husband to the bride we are the bride whether you're a man or a woman it doesn't matter male and female all are one in christ which means in our spirit body there is no gender which also means that there's going to be no marriage given when we get to heaven so this is what i want to bring out is that because jesus christ is the husband satan is another he's another way he's the broad way that leads to destruction satan is a whore and he wants the bride of christ to commit an affair. He wants us to cheat on Jesus Christ with himself. And the way that he's going to do that is he's going to tempt us. But the way that he tempts us is this. Look, when Satan wants to tempt us, he doesn't shoot off flares and he doesn't shoot off fireworks and make explosions because if he did that, he would shock us. So what he wants to do is do it very discreetly and he wants to be very manipulative. I want to read the Bible verse, 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2. And it came to pass in an evening time, which means morning, that David arose from off of his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. There's a few things that I want to mention. First of all, what in the world? was a king doing walking around on his roof he had an entire kingdom and a palace why was he up on his roof in the first place this is the thing just because he was the king just because he had power just because he had authority does not give him permission to go and do whatever he wants and you as a christian i don't care if you're a police officer i don't care if you're a politician a president i don't care if you're a doctor a lawyer a pastor whoever whatever you are it it doesn't mean that because you are an important person in the world that you can do whatever you want. No, you're going to have to give an account to God for everything that you do, everywhere that you go, and everything that you say. Is God going to whip us every time we step out of place? No, but I will tell you this. When you do step out of place, when you do sin, when you flirt with Satan, there's going to be an extreme consequence that's waiting behind the corner. This is the thing. Satan is going to try to minimize. He's going to try to minimize the sin in our mind. He's going to try to minimize the sin in our mind so that we're not shocked by the potential consequence that's around the corner. Satan doesn't want us to look at the consequence and the possible punishment and the possible reaction to the sin that we commit. Basically what I'm saying is that when two people look at each other and they might have romantic uh, intentions, right? And they see just a one moment pleasure and it's minimized the possible consequences. If people knew that there was gonna be a baby being born out of wedlock if people knew that when they had sex they were going to get aids or something bad was going to happen or the man was going to have to pay child support for 18 to 20 years just because of one night and pleasure would they still go out and commit that sin 
Probably not. And Satan doesn't want us to look at all the pain and suffering that comes around the corner with one little moment of pleasure. And I guess what I'm saying is not just so sensual or sexual. I'm talking about anything. Money, greed, materialism, whatever your cup of tea is, that is what Satan is going to give to you. Your cup of tea, what you do like. Also notice in the Bible verse, it says that the woman was very beautiful to look at. It doesn't say the woman was a ghastly, ugly, hideous looking ogre. No, she was very beautiful to look at. And Satan knows what's going to be beautiful to you. And he's going to feed it to you. He's not going to give you something that you don't like. If you don't like to drink alcohol, he's not going to tempt you with that. He's going to tempt you with what you do like. The next Bible verse that I want to read is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. See, Satan is going to come to us as something beautiful. He's not going to come to us with horns popping out of his head, fangs and a tail. No, he's not going to come to us like that. If he came to us like that, we would be shocked, we would be scared, we would be appalled, and we would never want any relations with him at all. And this is the truth, is that things are not personal. When people come to tempt you or people come in your life to talk to you, see, you don't realize the spirits that are inside of that person. We only look at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart and if we saw what was inside of a heart of another person if we knew the true intentions of the other person we probably wouldn't deal with them but this is the problem with people is that people don't show us all of their cards all at once no they hide things back until after they have us where they want us and when I say they I'm talking about demons that are living inside of people to cause us to cheat on Jesus Christ you know, Satan, when he comes to attack us, he will come to us like a cat or a little kitten pawing at your front door. And you hear a meow and a meow and a meow, and you open up your door and you look down and you see this cute, little, innocent-looking, harmless-looking kitten. And you feel so bad for the cat, for the little kitten. It just meowing and purring and it looks so cute and cuddly and so what you do is you walk by your emotions and you strive to please this little kitten so you go to your refrigerator and you get a uh, cold milk and you pour it into a bowl and then you set it outside the doorstep and you allow the kitten to drink some milk but then when you shut the door the next time you open up the door you realize there's 10 more kittens just as cute at the door so what you do is you feel bad and they tug at your heart so you let all the cute little kittens inside of your house and then when you come back from work your place is tore up the cute little kittens you find out that they were wild and they weren't tamed and they weren't trained and they tear up your leather couches and they destroy your home and they poop all over the place and they puke all over the place and when you come back to your house you realize it was just a mess and it was destroyed and that's exactly what Satan wants to do he wants to come inside of us and he might appear to be cute and cuddly but when you let him inside when you give him an inch he's gonna come inside of your house your temple and he's going to destroy everything. He's going to take away your peace, your joy. He's going to leave you behind miserable. But I want to tell you that if you continue to realize what's taking place, that Satan wants to flirt with you so you can flirt back, realize that he is always the initiator of the flirting. Did Eve or Adam come to the snake? Or did the snake come to Eve first? See, Satan is going to initiate the contact. So be wary when people come into your life of the intentions. Be wary of the spirits. Try the spirit to see if it's of God. God bless you and have a wonderful day.